What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here. Delarose.com. That's D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. You can head to the link in my description below and sign up for my newsletter, and then you'll never miss a video because you'll get a nice update every Friday. And you will also get a free graphic novel from me for your troubles. I write my own graphic novels, and people love them. So if you would like to check that out and you're big into comics like I am, uh, you should go do that. It'd be fun. Um, I made a bunch of custom-bound omnibuses. You can kind of see them right here. Uh, they're a little bigger than my camera wants to show at the moment, but I'm going to go over all of them and kind of show you uh, exactly what was done here. Um, check things out. Uh, because I like hardcover books. I like nice, cool, clean things on my shelf. And then I'm going to compare to what a normal, like, DC omnibus looks like so you can get a difference for that, get a kind of feel for things. Most of them were Marvel, but the top one I did is actually my... Uh, it's one of my two or three favorite uh, runs and storylines of all time. This is Batgirl. It's by Brian Q. Miller. And you notice that Batgirl is blonde here. Uh, it, it's a different version of Batgirl. Prior to New 52, uh, Stephanie Brown took up the mantle. Um, and this is one of my favorite art pieces of all time uh, by Art Germ on the cover here. Had that done. And it lasted like 24, 25 issues, something like that, uh, before DC canceled it and then rewrote their universe and changed all the continuity. Uh, and honestly, it's just some of the best comics of all time. You have this girl who's being trained by Barbara Gordon, who's Oracle, and she is learning to become a superhero. She's not quite so good at it yet, not quite able to figure out how to juggle her personal life and all that, and uh, just felt really real and organic. Would have been a nice TV show uh, or anything, really. Uh, and Brian Q. Miller was one of the writers of Smallville, I believe, so that's, uh, that's why it had that nice uh, college feel to it. So good stuff. Uh, got the cover right here. Got a beautiful uh, side, Batgirl Stephanie Brown, and uh, some wonderful art. Uh, this is also another one of the issue covers on the back. So I just I just went, you know, really good with the art on this uh, rather than anything else. Um, this was two trade paperbacks. There's, there's two very thick trade paperbacks. I believe it's called uh, Batgirl the Complete Collection or something like that. And they formatted right in here very nicely. So, uh, cool thing about this is you also get this little this little ribbon, so you can like mark your mark your spot with it. A lot of the uh, omnibuses that Marvel and DC come out with don't actually have that. I love this because I hate trying to find bookmarks, or you know, a lot of times I just like put like receipts that I had in my pocket, and use them as bookmarks. When you have these nice ribbons, it just turns out really nicely. Great storyline. I wish this lasted longer. Uh, the the art for the covers uh, was done by Art Germ for the most part. Absolutely beautiful. Dustin Nguyen did a lot of them too. Also absolutely beautiful, and uh, just good comics all the way around. Very happy uh, to have this. Now, DC is very unlikely to make an omnibus of this for real. They seem to hate this character and want to pretend that she doesn't exist, and that is a large portion of why I had this made. The next is going to be like a trilogy here, and uh, you'll see this uh, in the corner here, Marvel Comics 2, and I did one, one volumes 1 through 3. And what I did with these volumes is uh, this was a 90s initiative by Marvel. Uh, it started out with this character, Spider-Girl, which is my favorite character of all time. I did not get Spider-Girl custom bound yet, and there's a reason for that, and I'll get to that in a second. But it was very popular. It was one of their best-selling books because they sold it in this digest format, which got into schools and things like that. And uh, so they made this whole universe, Marvel Comics 2, and it's meant to be the future of the Marvel Universe. So Spider-Man has a daughter, and she inherits the powers, and then he actually is training her as her father uh, to be Spider-Girl. Sometimes he, you know, doesn't want her to do it because he thinks it's too dangerous for her, but other times he's, you know, he's really helping her out and things like that. Really beautiful family story, uh, and a, a beautiful high school setting, good friends in it, good cast of characters. Written by Tom DeFalco, drawn by Pat O'Leaf and Ron Friends. Wonderful stuff. But the, it was so popular, they made this whole series around it. And Tom DeFalco wrote the entire thing. Originally, it started out uh, with Spider-Girl. And then uh, this character right here, who is the Juggernaut 2, who's the son of the original Juggernaut. Except he wants to use his powers to do good, uh, unlike what his father did. They also came out with The Avengers Next. And uh, that had a cast of characters... Uh, who were children of the original Avengers, and etc. And those were done, and each of those lasted 12 issues each. They've never been collected in uh, any sort of trade paperback or anything like that, so I actually had to put the real issues in here. You see this, like, old-school, uh, almost a newsprinty paper that these were printed on at the time. And the first volume, I just put in those two 
um, series, J2 and Avengers next, which we'll get to see one of the covers pretty shortly. And uh, J2 actually joined that Avengers team also. So there was a lot, a uh, lot to it uh, that, that had a nice crossover continuity and things like that. Here we are, A next. Uh, and, you know, they had a bunch of different fights and a bunch of different things. Very cool concept. Well, those weren't do selling as well as Spider-Girl. And so what happened was they started launching these mini series of characters in that. And that's where the, my volume two comes in. And they had a, a mini series of a character called Wild Thing, which is a uh, daughter of Wolverine. You see it right here. They have a nice, uh, nice uh, contents page. Yeah, uh, the Fantastic Five, which is uh, uh, later Fantastic Four. Now, Tom DeFalco wrote the Fantastic Four. Also, you see the scroll Lila, Lija, sorry, uh, who was part of the Fantastic Four in the '90s. It got kind of retconned, and but she's uh, in the, involved in this here, so that kind of continues on. Very cool. And Franklin Richards, uh, the son of uh, Sue and uh, Reed, are, is actually kind of in charge of the team in this one. Very cool. And then there were two miniseries of new characters who spun off from Spider-Girl, The Buzz and Dark Devil. And uh, their their identities are mysteries in the book, and they actually matter in Spider-Girl. Uh, so you, you kind of want to read these at a certain time. I was surprised that these two in particular didn't get included in the Spider-Girl complete collections uh, because they really do flesh out some of the stories of these characters, and it does matter. And they do have reveals of who these characters are that don't actually happen in the uh, book. So uh, good stuff there. I've got all the miniseries in there. Now these got canceled also, and they stopped doing the miniseries. And uh, Spider-Girl just continued. Uh, for some reason that, that book was just unable to stop. It went for like a hundred issues. They finally rebooted it as Spectacular Spider-Girl and then Amazing Spider-Girl. Uh, so it just went on forever. But uh, eventually there were more characters, there were more um, uh, series that kind of happened within this universe and they were mini series and they they did big event books instead of what they were doing before so they did last hero standing which is like a, a big event you know kind of like um secret wars and then they did last planet standing to you know kind of up the ante on that so those were the two events in here and then uh they did try to resurrect uh the mini series again towards like the later tenure of spider girl also so you got avengers next returned so you got a little bit more of those characters in that fantastic five again is volume two of that american dream who is uh the captain america uh sort of uh replacement there uh for this universe and then uh this one actually was not done by uh defalco and was kind of not in that continuity but it did feature American Dream uh, because they brought all these different Captain America characters together called, and called them the Captain America Corpse. So I included that in there just because it exists uh, and that character is in there. So this really rounds out all of the MC2 universe appearances and all of DeFalco's work. So these three volumes are all of that, excepting for the Spider-Girl Complete Collections, which they have not completed yet. So, uh, you know, I've got, I've got one of them right here, volume three. Uh, and when all of them are together, I might get them custom bound into omnibuses also. I'm, I'm kind of holding out hope maybe, maybe, maybe one day they'll actually do a real omnibus of it, but likely not. Uh, and I'm going to guess just because these were not all that popular, you will not see these in collected edition. That's why I uh, had these bound along with Batgirl. Now, my fifth one is a little bit different, and this is Machine Man. Now, Machine Man is a Jack Kirby invention, and there is a complete collection of Machine Man. You kind of see this one's going to be a split. So I had this one, which was the issues, and then the other ones were actually uh, the trade paperbacks. This one is actually half issues and then half the complete collection trade paperback, and there's a reason for this. Machine Man originally appeared in a different book, and it was not Machine Man. It was 2001, A Space Odyssey, and... Uh, Marvel got the license for this. Jack Kirby wanted to do cool, weird things with it. It was a beautiful series. I read this uh, from start to finish, and I was very impressed. And uh, they eventually just didn't have a license anymore, and they spun Machine Man out of it. Now, they have, since Machine Man is their own character and was never in the movies and all that and was just from their comics, they got to keep the rights to that character. So that's where the complete collection came in later on. And uh, then that Jack Kirby got to continue there with his beautiful Kirby art, etc. Kirby actually quit uh, Machine Man, and it was taken over at the end by none other than our hero of all the people and the greatest comic artist of all time, in my opinion, Steve Ditko. So beautiful stuff, and I, I just wanted the Steve Ditko stuff to get a nice omnibus hardcover treatment because it's likely not to happen. 
They don't own the rights to the 2001 material, so that can't get reprinted. It cannot actually be included in a trade paperback or anything like that. So you do not get that. Uh, so you only get a portion of the Machine Man story uh, through this. So this is why I have this final omnibus. And uh, beautiful stuff. I think they did a wonderful job with all the art and putting this together on the spines and all that. I didn't really show the back covers of these, but we did the same thing. Just got, just picked some nice art and, uh, and that's where it went. All right. So these are my custom omnibuses. You can see they've got the nice, like thick paper at the beginning of all of them. They've got a little table of contents at the beginning. They've got the ribbon and then they've got the every, everything kind of bound in there very nicely. They've got uh, a ribbon binding here, which uh, is right here, which means it's not glued. It's actually kind of stitched in there. And that's actually a better form of binding than you get in your trade paperbacks, which can fall apart kind of easily. Now, how does it compare to a DC omnibus? You can see the size is a little uh, smaller. These omnibuses, they do them in a little bit oversized of art. So you get a little thicker and a little taller when you are comparing the two here. And next, you have a, a dust jacket on these. Now, dust jackets are kind of stupid, and they don't really actually do anything. I could get dust jackets printed for these and make my own on this, but I just I just don't know that I care that much to do that. Uh, these look great as they are. So those are the differences between a custom-bound omnibus and this. Now, what does it cost to make one of these? Uh, it's about 75 bucks, so it's not cheap uh, per book, that is. So uh, you have to get somebody to hardcover bind it. You have to have them do the sewn binding uh, you have to, I had to have them kind of design it and make sure it all laid out right. Uh, and so with that, uh, you know, it was, it was worth the cost, I think, uh, to have a beautiful book on my shelf that's going to, uh, really be long lasting and awesome, much like my omnibuses. That's it. That's my overview of my five custom bound omnibuses I have made. They're freaking thick and huge and they're awesome. And I'm stoked to have them. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hit the like and subscribe button for more comic content, and we'll be back soon.